On the 13th of December 2001, the fifth episode of Walking with Beasts, Sabretooth, was released. Set one million years ago in the early Pleistocene epoch of Paraguay, filmed in nearby Brazil, the prologue starts in the Pampian grasslands of South America, where we see a small mammal being chased by a large terror bird. Once the predators catch up, they are scared off by the main star of this episode, an adult Smilodon, the titular Sabretooth. A very cool way to open up the episode. After the title scene, I like that the narration immediately establishes the name Sabretooth Tiger as being misleading, as they are not closely related to tigers or any modern cats. They form the subfamily Machyrodontinae, the true saber-toothed cat, including Dinophilus from the last episode and Smilodon. The narration also explains how South America has developed a unique endemic fauna as it has been an isolated continent for roughly 30 million years, that is, until it drifted northwards and collided with North America during the earlier Pliocene Epoch, forming the Isthmus Isthmus of Panama. This led to the Great American Biotic Interchange, a huge exchange of animals between the Americas. Among the migrants from the north were Smilodon. Having evolved from the smaller North American species Smilodon gracilis, the South American Smilodon populator is not only the largest species of Smilodon, but also one of the largest cats to ever live. The model looks fantastic. The beautiful spotted coat is really striking and believable. There is also lion-like sexual dimorphism exhibited, with males having a mane, but there's no evidence for this. The head puppet also looks great. Its model was slightly retooled for the Dinophilus from Next of Kin, and will be repurposed again for another creature in the next episode. This doesn't bother me personally, as morphologically they are very similar. In another similarity to lions, we see the pride Halftooth is the lead of. There is much evidence both for and against sociality in Smilodon. Specimens with healed injuries have been found, suggesting they were cared for by others. However, scratch and puncture marks on other specimens suggest they may have been aggressive towards one another. It has been suggested that they may have formed packs more akin to those of wolves, or perhaps Smilodon was simply solitary. Regardless, the pride group structure is considered unlikely for Smilodon, as they do not exhibit strong sexual dimorphism like lions do. This leaves this episode's plot in kind of a funny spot, as it entirely revolves around this group structure, but for the sake of argument, we can assume Smilodon lived in prides. We see two rival males near the pride, looking to take over from Halftooth. This episode then quickly introduces us to some of the unique native animals of South America. The first is Didacurus, a giant glyptodont armadillo with an ankylosaur-like tail club. The model is flawless. The carapace is so intricately detailed that practically every single scoot is visible. It's animated beautifully too, with the tail swaying from side to side every step. Wonderful stuff. Next is Macrokenia, the last member of the Lytopterna, a strange group of hooved herbivores. While the narration states they are unrelated to any modern mammal, more recent studies have found that the odd Lytopterns may actually be close relatives of the Perissodactyls, the odd-toed ungulates including modern horses, tapirs and rhinos, as well as the extinct Brontotheres and Calicotheres. However, this was found well after the show's production. The model on the whole is really distinct and accurate, however the conical trunk of Macrokenia may actually have been more like the nose of a moose or a Sega antelope. We then get a more formal introduction to the terror birds seen in the opening. It's identified as Forest Rakos, but it's really just in name only. The narration states that they are 3 meters tall, however most estimates put Forest Rakos closer to 2 meters. Forest Rakos also had a stockier build and shorter neck than what is shown here, and it has a wing claw, which as far as I know, terror birds didn't have. Forest Rakos also became extinct during the Miocene Epoch, long before this episode takes place. The only terror bird that was still around at this time was Silopterus, but it was considerably smaller than most of its relatives. Compared to the other really accurate creatures in this episode, this one is an unfortunate outlier. That said, I do like the colours and the design overall is really cool. 
We then cut back to Halftooth's clan, with the narration explaining how, just like lions, a male leads a group of females and all of the cubs are Halftooths. Males fight one another to take control of others' prides, and this is how Halftooth broke one of his sabres. As such, the rival males challenge Halftooth, and the females retreat to hide and protect their cubs. We then get a really cool fight scene with the two brothers overwhelming Halftooth, despite his impressive size. Halftooth is forced to leave his territory, but he stays close in the nearby scrub forest. We then see a group of Didacurus battering each other with their tail clubs in a form of intraspecific combat, which is consistent with fractures on the fossilised carapaces of these animals, which is a really nice touch. We then see the females of Halftooth's former pride aggressively reject the brothers, as they know that to fully take over the pride, they will have to kill Halftooth's cubs. As he ventures through the forest, Halftooth encounters quite possibly the coolest thing ever, the giant ground sloth, Megatherium. Just that sequence of words sounds insane, and yet they were real creatures, and very successful ones at that. I don't think I need to explain why they're one of my favourite extinct mammals, both in the show and in general. The model also looks superb. Here it is reconstructed with a shaggy coat of fur, however recent studies have suggested that giant sloths may have had very little hair coverage to avoid overheating. This was found well after the show's production however, and the model and puppet look fantastic. Fun fact, my good friend Alec actually owns the Megatherium arm prop from this episode. Back to the story, Halftooth wisely steers clear of a browsing pair of Megatherium. We then see the female Smilodon hiding Halftooth's two remaining cubs so she can hunt. And oh, okay, I have to point this out. Why do the cubs look so weird? Anyways, the brothers mark their new territory with urine. And no, I'm not making the poster Zookas joke again. Although I think I just did. And whilst the females were out hunting, the brothers search for the remaining cubs, which is a pretty tense scene, honestly. Speaking of tense scenes, we have reached the awesome Macroquinia hunt scene. We see the female Smilodon stalking a large herd, the narration stating that one false move and they will have to start all over again. It really makes you want to see the cat succeed, knowing they've been doing this for hours. The predators give chase, spooking the herd with an impressive number of animals animated on the screen at a time. The cats run down one Macroquinia, but it quickly turns, throwing off one of the cats. The herbivore, however, is then caught by another Smilodon. This part is bittersweet to me, honestly, as the accuracy of both the pack hunting Smilodon and them chasing down such fast and manoeuvrable prey is heavily doubted, but it's just so well executed in terms of build up, tension, animation, and use of practical effects. The part that is more accurate, however, is when they wrestle their prey to the ground before delivering the suffocating bite to the neck with their sabre teeth. As the cats begin to feed, the narration states that their sabres prohibit them from eating a lot of the carcass. This cues the arrival of a flock of terror birds, who scavenge on the Smilodon's leftovers. The following narration is quite confusing, as it states that terror birds are one of the few groups to migrate north successfully, and that whilst forest racos are now scavengers of Smilodon carcasses, their cousins are running riots in Texas and Florida. This is referring to Titanis, the only genus of terror bird to make it to North America. As I said earlier, Forest Rakos was already long extinct by this time, but Titanis may also have been extinct by this time as well. To confound things even further, when Titanis was alive, it also had to compete with Smilodon and other predators in North America as well. This episode keeps trying to push this narrative that giant terror birds were still around and successful one million years ago, but this is false. This episode has really good use of pathetic fallacy, as when Halftooth's situation worsens, so does the weather. This is perpetuated by the female looking for her cubs, whilst Halftooth scans the rim of his old territory, finding the severed head of his last cub, and a narration adding the brother's takeover is complete. It's a pretty chilling scene. We then see Halftooth stalking a lone male Macrokenia in the early morning. It's very plausible speculation for males to leave the herd upon reaching sexual maturity. However, a Megatherium drives the Macrokenia away, prompting Halftooth to pounce, but the odds were against him, and the herbivore escaped. 
Later that morning, we see him planning another ambush, this time on a mother Macrochenia and her offspring. The juvenile is then suddenly attacked and killed by a terror bird. I do like that we also see the predatory side of these terror birds. Halftooth seizes his chance and scares the bird off its kill. Again, the weather reflects Halftooth's situation. He is doing better and the weather is clearer too. We then see how the brothers have now completely usurped Halftooth and mate with the females as they have come into heat again. Now they have no cubs to suckle. We then briefly see some young females practicing their hunting skills on Adida Curus, which is a scene I appreciate as it's normal behavior for younger animals. We then see the clan feeding on a Macrochenia corpse with terror birds nearby. However, their feast is interrupted by a Megatherium. Here it is speculated that they will supplement their diet with meat. At the time, this was based simply on the fact that herbivores do occasionally eat some meat for extra protein. However, a very recent study found evidence of another ground sloth, Mylodon, would occasionally scavenge from carcasses, adding more credibility to the scene that didn't even really need any more in my opinion. One of the brothers stands up to the sloth and it straight up punches and kills him. The others give up the kill and just like that, the tables have turned for Halftooth. Halftooth returns to the edge of his territory and can smell that there is now only one brother. Said brother was also not the dominant of the pair, and the females seemingly are giving a vote of no confidence on him as they are not fans. Sensing the change, Halftooth moves in and challenges the remaining male. Now that it's a fair fight, Halftooth triumphs in another cool fight scene and the remaining brother retreats. We then see him die on the edge of a very photogenic cliffside as his corpse is scavenged by terror birds, a very fitting way for his story to end. The episode concludes with a brief shot of a Didacurus with adorable youngsters in tow and Halftooth standing triumphantly over his territory once again with new cubs, of which the episode glosses over the fact that Halftooth would probably have had to kill any cubs of the brothers the females may have had, but Hey ho, the narration ends the episode explaining how Smilodon were incredibly successful, but eventually the world changed too much, leading to them becoming extinct. Okay, so I know I said Whale Killer is my favourite episode overall, but Sabretooth is a very close second. Whilst the storyline is a little wonky in terms of the Smilodon sociality debate, this episode has a clever workaround. Because Halftooth is exiled from the clan, we get to see both social and solitary Smilodon. I'm not sure if that was intentional, but it works in this episode's favour regardless. The storyline is this episode's greatest strength, as it is engaging and you really do want to see Halftooth succeed. If I had to nitpick, I do wish some of the other creatures could have had a bit more screen time, but I mean, the episode is straight up called Sabretooth, so it makes sense they would take up much of the focus. Whilst I find the terror birds a bit problematic, they get the general point across that they were being outcompeted by the cats, even if they are in the wrong time. The other creatures were great, I just wish we got to see more of them. Overall, this episode was wonderful from beginning to end. Thank you so much for watching and please do stay tuned for my review of the sixth and final episode of Walking with Beasts Mammoth Journey. Thank you, bye bye now.